Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is performance qualification. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. Make sure you subscribe to get all the good content. Check out the status bar below for our agenda and stick around to the end to get to bonus questions. Our topic, performance qualification, is covered by the process validation requirements in both the regulation and the standard, which are 820.75 and 1345 section 7.5.6. For more information on performance qualification, please check out the Global Harmonization Task Force document, which you can find the link to in the video description. Performance qualification in five words. Production runs prove consistent output. At its simplest level, a performance qualification is setting up our manufacturing process at nominal, running that process for a designated number of runs, inspecting the output, and showing that the output fulfills our acceptance criteria. So we want to set the process up, we want to run it at nominal for a certain number of runs, and we want to make sure the product itself meets our predetermined acceptance criteria. At this point, we have completed, successfully completed, an IQ and an OQ. And both IQ protocol report, OQ protocol reports, they should all be approved at this point. We should also have our PQ protocol approved at this point. Within our PQ protocol, we will have a pre-approved acceptance criteria, and we will also define the number of runs that we are going to do within our PQ. Historically, the number of runs has been three. This is due to some early FDA communication around process validation. However, this line of thinking is now obsolete. You have to have a valid statistical rationale that supports the number of runs that you do within PQ. That statistical rationale has to take into account the annual volume of product that you produce, the number of lots, the size of those lots, it also has to take into account the complexity of your medical device and the risk that your medical device presents and any historical performance data that you, meet, that you may have to similar manufacturing processes. Product produced during our PQ is always kept in quarantine until all successful validation runs are completed and the PQ report is signed off. When we develop our acceptance criteria for our performance qualification for our PQ, the more advanced companies will utilize process capability measures as part of that acceptance criteria, either CPKs or PPKs. It's important to note here, if you did really robust process development and in your OQ you really challenged the process well, you should never fail a PQ. If your OQ and your process development was really robust, your PQ should go off very easily and without a hitch. There should be little to no issues with that PQ. Problems that we have in PQ happen when in our process development or in our OQ, there were sources of variation or parts of the process that we did not fully understand. And those issues are highlighted later when we do a full run of manufacturing under normal operating conditions multiple runs, we start to highlight some of those issues that we may have missed during process development and our operational qualification. So how do I know this is working? Well, first, I have an approved PQ protocol that has my pre-approved acceptance criteria in it. Second, the number of runs that I define for my PQ, those that number of runs, it's based on a valid statistical rationale that takes into account the risk and complexity of my medical device. Third, the product made during PQ is held in quarantine until all the PQ runs are successfully completed. Fourth, operators conducting the PQ activities, they are trained to the PQ protocol and the production processes. And then finally, any deviations that happen during PQ, those deviations are captured, documented, reviewed and investigated, and then ultimately closed. How do I know it's not working? Well, first, I don't have a fully approved PQ protocol. Second, the number of runs that I run in my PQ, it's just three. There's no rationale for why three is appropriate, or there's no statistics to support that. 
And then finally, deviations that occur during my PQ, they're not addressed, they're ignored, and I just accept my results and move on. And now for those bonus questions. First, how do we determine the number of runs within our PQs? Second, what happens to PQ product after the PQ run is done? And then third, how do we investigate and manage deviations that occur during the process validation? Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Send any questions to me at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Making quality systems simple for you.